Greetings, friends, and welcome to another episode of The Mistake Zone, your weekly dose of our lives and the mistakes within them. My name is Jaron Wade. Joining me, as always, one of my best friends in the whole wide world, Matt Alba. Hey, Matt. Yo. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Matt, Mm -hmm. we have another friend here. Mm -hmm. And Rakush, gotta say, man, looking pretty moist right now. I hate you so much. (laughs) Matt, Uh do you like the word moist? I am perfectly fine with the word moist. Jaren, do you like the word moist? You know what, Matt? I... I wouldn't say I like the word moist, but I'm okay with the word moist. Rikush, as someone who's moist right now, how are you feeling? Mm-hmm. You know how, like, one episode a couple of months back, Matt, it was just, like, you and I running solo while. I think, Jaren, you might have been Isekai then. And I was like, I get real triggered when, like, you guys say your names over and over again. Oh, I'm going to say same... our names so many times this oh, episode, dude. Rikush. That's the same vibe I'm getting right now with moist. Like, you guys keep saying it, and there's a part of me that's just, like... I know the panic attack is, like, an hour away right now. <laughs> Rakus, come on. We're just three moist boys sitting together in a room. Oh, man. <laughs> Better turn the AC on. Yep. <laughs> man, the weather's been really weird lately. I don't know if you guys have felt it, but around the Mistake Zone HQ, there have been certain days where I would be walking our dog, and it sort of feels like i'm swimming in the humidity <laughs> yeah if that makes sense i don't go outside on those days <laughs> okay it's like you hit a wall of just like air yes yeah like real gross it's air. Re- it's really thick yeah and i don't know guys this this past few weeks have been really weird when it has come to weather just because it's been raining i'm not sure about this area but in my area it has been raining just on and off constantly <laughs> But it also is one of those rains where it's just going to be heavy in the morning and then this pocket in the afternoon where it's just really humid and Mm -hmm. then maybe start raining again in the evening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as someone who likes to walk their dog at least twice a day, uh, if she doesn't get that afternoon evening walk, real sad, real sad, you guys. But hopefully it feels real damp. When it, like, rains and then it gets, like, super hot and then, like, you know, you know the rain is coming back. But it's, like, this, like, weird, like, hot dampness to it. You mean it's, like, there's a weird moistness in the air? I don't like you guys. <laughs> you're you're trying really hard to navigate around that word, Rakush, but it's okay. It's okay. And I, now that we're here, I feel like our percentage of listeners who also don't like the word moist have probably left but that's okay <laughs> or maybe they would have hit that fast forward 15 seconds button and get to this point of the mistake zone and we're here once again in person to share our many mistakes you guys mm-hmm. before we started recording you had a taste test of some gummies you found at you know one of our local supermarkets mm-hmm. and that kind of sparked this whole conversation about you know, the word moist, mostly because in terms of a gummy, I said beforehand that I don't like something that leaves a residue on my fingers. Mm -hmm. And that, Matt, when I, you kind of felt the same way. Does that extend to, say, something covered in sugar, leaving the sugar, I guess, residue on your fingers? I was about to say, I don't like it when I get sugar left behind. Yes. But for some reason, I'm okay with... um, the sour powder on like sour like gummies or anything getting left behind on my hands. Were you a fan of what was the candy recouche where it was a candy, I think a stick, and then you dipped it in like some powder? Oh, fun dip. Fun, fun dip, yeah. Are, are you guys fun dip boys? I straight up didn't even worry about the stick. Right. I poured the sugar <laughs> right into my mouth. It, it was too much work. Right. I, I don't like working that much for my sugar. You know, it's like I, I just kind of want to like pop the candy in the mouth and that's it. Also, I didn't like the the stick. The stick tasted like weird chalk. Yeah, I don't like... It was like a Flintstones vitamin, yeah. but like as a stick. Did you guys uh, like... They also had the ring pops as well. Oh, yeah, dude. I'd slobber on a ring pop. Yeah. And then like the finger would feel real gross because like, oh, yeah, if you actually just... did like the actual like... Dip it in the powder and then like do that and then like There's the powder s- and ring pops. Oh yeah, I never saw the powder. I was oh, just I talking about you... a normal ring pop that like you dip and you just like fucking just slobber on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. don't you like dip it in the 
powder? I've never seen. Yeah, you're thinking I've, of a baby bottle pop. That's what it is. Sorry. Yes. Both grows. <laughs> Not if a lollipop doesn't have a stick. <laughs> I don't want it. <laughs> that, so you don't that want just candy. A hard candy? Yeah, that's just the well, hard candy. Well, I'm more so thinking about a ring pop just because I've I think oh. I've had a ring pop once and I real you know I think about the aftermath when I was a small child and that left a negative impression on me and I never had one. How do you feel since. about push pop? Same thing. Okay. Would you like it. would you ever eat a ring pop like the diamond shaped candy off of a ring pop that wasn't on a ring because that kind of feels like a weird not candy. That, that's too big. Yeah. That's a choking hazard at that point. Yeah. You, I would only really eat, like, if you mean flavor wise, yeah, sure. But the size of the ring pop, not on a ring. Okay, no, actually, no, when I was a kid and I would eat the ring pops, I would definitely have, like, clowned on a ring pop sized hard candy. But now, as a 33 year old adult, it was just a choking hazard. That was a, more of a choking hazard when we were kids. But, like, you had the pacifier element to it so that, like, it wouldn't go all the way. Because, like, it, your teeth will stop it, right? Your teeth will save you because it's, cause it's, like, gonna the, the plastic ring part is going to get caught on your teeth. But the ring part, it had, right? It had, like, what if like the a... candy separates behind the teeth and you accidentally, like, gulp? Well, then, you know what? That's a whole, like, sep- that's, like, the separate problem. Like, at least... It was like, I always thought it was very well adhered because I vividly remember just chomping on the the plastic part of the ring. And that might be why I had to wear braces. Oh, man. (laughs) The mat lore in this episode is pretty heavy right now. (laughs) You know, like, if you say moisturize, like, that's not even a bad word. It's just like moist by itself. You're just not not the one bringing it up. This is your fault. Like, if, if you just did moisturize or like, you know, like you say it is like, I don't know if there's any other words that have that collection of letters together because I'm going to try to stop saying like, it now. What about when people say stuff like, oh, yeah, it's supple. Supple is fine. Like, when when you hear it, it's fine. The meaning is kind of like, Ugh. but, like, hearing it is okay. It's just like there's certain words that sound weird. Like, guava also sounds w- weird to me. You know, it's like, what am I supposed this to do with this? This is so alien to me. <laughs> so alien to me. Guys, the reason I brought up a lot of food is because I have a canned beverage with me right now. Uh, I noticed that this canned matcha ice or bubble tea was in my fridge, and it's best before today. Uh-huh. So I brought it so I wouldn't feel bad about spending two fifty on it a few months ago. So it went bad that quickly. No, it's it's best before today, Matt. So. Okay. Of course, I, I'll probably be parched after our hardcore poop casting because I'm mm-hmm. 12 years old and I like <laughs> saying poop cast. Uh-huh. And we'll, we'll see how this goes. But guys, mm-hmm. uh, Mistake Zone, gonna bring hit you with some classic Jaren. Classic Jaren consuming and spending money because he is a capitalist pig. Uh-huh. So I think it was a week or two ago, Rikush, you told me that Indigo, which is our big 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 box like bookstore yeah. was having a sale where if you bought three books you would get a fourth one free yes and i bought manga oh. of course i did what i bought no. chapter i bought volume five of dress up darling uh-huh because i didn't have that uh-huh i had six and seven but at the time <laughs> when i bought six and seven that was part of another sale <laughs> and they didn't have five in stock so now i got my five and then i bought i b- believe volumes four and five of uh hatomi chan is shy Cool. But Jaren, Jaren, you, you you had to have bought more uh, manga Shakespeare, right? Uh, oddly enough, not available in big box uh, Indigo, Damn. man. That you is very odd. You hate to see it. That is very odd. It's probably in the teen section. <laughs> and Sorry, I'm an adult, so I shop in the <laughs> manga section, you guys, obviously. But this weekend, you know, we were in Indigo once again, and I saw another sign that said, okay, two books. If you bought two books, 15% off. Bought three books, twenty percent off. But if you bought four plus, twenty five percent off. Plus, if you're a plus member, you get an extra ten percent off. So I thought, I got paid this week. <laughs> also, I'm pretty sure that's a better deal. Yeah, that's a better deal. Just because when you buy the three by three get one, you yeah. need to make sure they're all of relatively same value. But yeah. here you're getting a base percentage off, of course. Exactly. So like, if you buy like a sixty dollar book and twenty five percent off that, like that's of course. Yeah, that's that's huge. <laughs> so I, I go to my adult manga section. 
I adult think... manga <laughs> doesn't sound like what you're trying. Yeah, to not say not about. that kind of. Adult we, we all know what I'm trying manga. to say. Uh-huh. The seinen manga. So I bought two Junji Ito, you know, collections. I mm-hmm. believe Tome and Love Sickness. I also bought the the. What's, what's the Spiral Books name again? Uzumaki. Now? Yeah, I bought that one just because I don't have it in my collection. Nice. Ch- uh, volume eight of Dress Up Darling, of course. Mm-hmm. Of course. And then I picked up the who's who's Chainsaw Man, the writer of Chainsaw Man, Tatsumaki Fujimoto. Yes, his collect two of his collections. Nice. I believe seventeen to twenty one, and then twenty two to twenty six. Yes, that's why I messaged you guys. Hey. Which one was the one you guys... Because I don't remember what we talked about. Sure. Uh-huh. To see. And the story that you guys were really fond of, not in these collections. I believe Rikushi said that it's getting an It, it a came out again? already. Yeah, okay. so that's how I actually found out about the Buy 3 Go and Free. Because I right. went to Indigo to pick up Goodbye Airy. Uh, mm-hmm. It's finally right. out in like paperback. So I was like, I, I've collected every single release mm-hmm. of it so far. Really wanted that one too. So yeah, so, still yeah. really good. So six manga and all. So that should get me 35% off. Yes. We check out, and then I check the receipt, or we check the receipt, of course. And guys, not there. Uh-huh. So uh, my partner, you know, takes the receipt to the manager, and then I'm kind of guarding all our hall because we bought some <laughs> other stuff too. Um, she also bought a blind box of My Hero Academia, like one of those pop vinyl things. Okay, she got all my you guys. Oh, nice. Anyway, while she's taking the receipt to the manager, I, I actually look at the sign in question that you know breaks down the sale, uh-huh. and then. I read the fine print. Yes. Oh, no. Oh, no. This deal only applies to what is called their TikTok collection, <laughs> uh, which are trending books that are on TikTok right now. Of all the, like, honestly, type of books yeah. that could not be in a TikTok collection, <laughs> you're telling me that mangas aren't in the TikTok collection. No. Wild. I didn't bother to scan the the book list because I was embarrassed, of course. But, <laughs> but... Uh, so my partner was telling me about the exchange and the manager was like, oh, are these part of the TikTok collection? And she's like, what? <laughs> and he was like, oh yeah, the sale's only for, uh, the TikTok collection. Uh, whatever. I'll just give you the discount anyways. Nice. <laughs> Guys, this floored me because as I said, I'm not going to say the location, but this is one of those, you know, big box retailers mm-hmm. where I thought, can you just do that? Uh, as a, like, this isn't a mom and pop shop. You're literally giving us you know, up to thirty five percent off. Yeah, that, that's a lot. Yeah. If anything, I feel like <laughs> that person would care less about giving you the discount yeah. than a mom and pop shop would. Point taken. Point taken. But guys, mm. so he explained that yeah, it's it's four at twenty five percent off. So I'll give four of them twenty five percent off, and then the extra two, you know, the fifteen percent off. Mm-hmm. And at this point, he's giving us a discount, so it's like, you can't complain. Yeah. But, 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 if I were to complain, <laughs> those two uh, Chainsaw Man collections, before yeah. Chainsaw Man collections, those were on the cheaper side. Uh-huh. Okay. Those got, you know, the 35% off. Uh, the two bigger <laughs> Junji Ito ones got the 25% off, and uh-huh. can't complain, but, but it still kind of hurts. Still kind of hurts. No. And that's my manga story <laughs> for this week, you guys. Mm-hmm. Save that for you. Was gonna was gonna <laughs> type that out in our group chat, but thought, hey, save it for the pod. Nice, 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 nice. Because I'm always capital- good to have content here. Because <laughs> I'm a capitalist pig. Nice. How many? Um, how do you display your books now? Um, we're still building out our sitting room, and right now, <laughs> so I haven't transported all my glass display cases to the Mistake Zone HQ. So all my figures are in a closet right now. Are you anyway. going to put those in your sitting room? Uh, we're debating. Sitting room or my office. Okay, because I just assumed you were going to put those in your office. Yeah. D- do but... you have people over that like you wouldn't want seeing that stuff? Well, in our sitting room has our record player and on top of the speakers. I sent you guys pics. That's where my Nino and Ichka figures oh, are sitting okay. right now. So I think that ex- will answer your question. But yeah, my books are also in a closet and we're waiting for a... You know, a, a nice bookcase to get just to display kind of right. all our various books, which will be our manga. Because y- y- no shame, you guys. No shame in the Mistake Zone HQ. But speaking about being a capitalist pig, mm-hmm. before we move on to the main event of the episode, mm-hmm. I think it was, I'm not sure if it was announced this week or kind of 
found out this week, but we're all Game Pass users in this room, correct? Yeah. PC Game Pass, Matt? Yeah. Rikush PC Game Pass? PC Game Pass. So I do, since I have an Xbox console, I do the Xbox Ultimate, um, the Game Pass Ultimate, I guess, subscription tier. But I was in the camp of, for the longest time now, Microsoft allowed you to, hey, you can do a one-to-one conversion of your Xbox Live Gold to Game Pass Ultimate. So the quote-unquote trick would be you bought up to three years of Xbox Gold for... And then I, I did it at Costco, so that's like $50 right. each, for, per year. And then you would pay the conversion fee, which is either $20, or if you were lucky and you had a $1 a month Game Pass deal going on, it would just be a dollar to convert. So essentially, you were getting three years of Game Pass Ultimate for three years of the cost of three years of gold, which would be like $150, $180, depending. Mm-hmm. And which, which I thought was fair enough. And a lot of people thought they were fair, but it was revealed this week that the conversion rate uh, will go from one to one to three months of three to two, essentially. Jonas math is is too hard for, so three, for three, right three months of uh, Xbox um, Gold will give you two months of like Ultimate now, essentially. Oh, so, so basically, you're going to be paying one fifty for two years of Ultimate. Yeah, instead. pretty much. That's still like pretty good. I was going <laughs> to essentially ask. How are you now that we've had a few years of Game Pass? How are you guys feeling about Game Pass? And you know, there has been talks that the price this was going to be an entry level price, but you know, I believe it was Phil Spencer said that yeah, eventually we'll come to a place where we will increase the price of Game Pass. And I guess with this kind of news that at least that gold to ultimate conversion is happening, how are you guys feeling about Game Pass right now? And do you, is there a certain price point where you would consider to stop subscribing? Matt, how much are we paying right now per month? It's like 20 bucks a month, right? I think it's like under 20. I think it's like 17 something. Something like that. Yeah. So considering we're spending on an annual basis close to like, well, over 200 bucks. It's definitely over 200 bucks because if it's 17 a month. I don't think that's over two hundred. Yeah, because ten months would be one hundred and seventy, and then you add thirty four on top, so that's two hundred and four a month oh, okay. or a year. Like one fifty for two years versus like us paying two hundred per year. I think there's still a really good value mm-hmm. on the conversion that you're doing. I think for me, there was a period where I was able to play a lot more games on my PC than mm-hmm. I currently am able to just because of the setup. And I was getting good value from that. Like, I think it's fair to say I only picked up the latest Monster Hunter because it was on Game Pass mm-hmm. because I didn't have to worry about spending too much money on it. Now, the expansion, of course, I paid for that because, you know, yeah. we've been playing for that long. Um, there was a couple of other games that I was able to pick up from, like, the past that I really wanted to try out as well. Mm-hmm. So, all in all, um, depending on how much you game, like, it is still a good value, especially considering, like, First party titles now can cost you anywhere between ninety bucks to one hundred and ten bucks, taxes included, which is yeah. so gross, right? But like you're at least able to play that stuff on Game Pass, and like you're able to get some conversion and money's worth on that front as well. Like mm-hmm. if you do it on an annual basis and you play even like two of those games, like you're almost breaking even, and then you add in a couple of indie games here and there, that would have been like twenty, thirty bucks. Mm-hmm. Like you're still getting value on it. I do think that in the last couple of years, whether that's because of the pandemic or other things, like I've, I've kind of stayed out of the loop on the news side of things a lot, but it does feel like first party Microsoft titles have not really hit as well, or like they haven't like even released that many. So there is a part of me that's like, I don't know how many of those 90 to $100 games I'm really going to be like playing on the game pass itself. So it's it's a little tricky to figure out if it is worth it or not. Like, you, we might be kind of breaking even on it, but yeah. as of right now, I'm just not sure. I mean, I'm just really glad I didn't spend seventy nine ninety nine on Redfall. Ooh. Yeah, where I think I'm in the same boat as you, Rakush, where especially now, uh, I'm not playing as many games as I once did, uh, which might be noticeable <laughs> uh, in our weekly podcast about our hobbies. But... With Game Pass, I feel that yes, one fifty for two years would still be 
a good value proposition, especially as you said, you pay if you play like two of their first party games, uh, you're pretty much breaking even at that point. Yeah. But I think my issue for the last few, I guess over the last year is I'm not necessarily playing those, especially first party Microsoft games, because we're still really waiting for me personally, at least the promise that Microsoft has made based on all the accusations that they've done. Because mm-hmm. sadly, the last thing that I really played, was, the last two I played were Redfall, mm-hmm. which we, we know how that went, Matt. Yeah. And Hi-Fi Rush, mm-hmm. which as cool as that was, that I, I think I believe I said it during that episode, um, Matt, where it was a game that was really made for Game Pass. And other than that, I've just been playing games that, you know, aren't on this service. You know, wh- what have we been talking about recently, Matt? Diablo. Uh-huh. We've been talking about Zelda. Uh-huh. Street, Street Fighter. Street Fighter. Yeah. And as much as the value proposition is there, you can still make the... It's, it's still a subscription. And even with something like Netflix where, you know, given all the current discussion around Netflix, if the value proposition is there, then of course you'll keep it. But if you're not actively using it, then... What's the point? So even at when my three years eventually runs out, I think I'm still going to have a kind of internal discussion where, sure, the value proposition is there, but where is Microsoft at with their promises, with you know all these ac- studios that were acquired? Are they putting out must-play games that makes this service worth it? Because kind of right now, the only thing I'm really looking forward to right now is you know Starfield yeah Mm -hmm. and other and I know Matt we were talking about oh let's play XO Primal when it comes out I believe July 14th is when it yeah hits um Game Pass and again it's one of those I'm not necessarily Game Pass for me at this point isn't necessarily me using it to play the must have Microsoft games it's more so Oh, I would have never tried this game otherwise mm-hmm. might yeah. as well. So I'm, that that's kind of my mindset where sure the value proposition still might be there, but at that point it's I'm not necessarily using it as much as I thought I would be. So mm-hmm. that's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah, because I'm even in a weird place right now, because one of the games that I'm looking forward to being on Game Pass is City Skylines 2. Yeah. In, right. I think like September or October. And I'm honestly even just thinking about buying that on Steam because of just how I think important workshop integration right. is into um into that. And I don't want to have to like deal with it going through Nexus mods or something. And I think that's another thing that I've noticed with Game Pass as well, where again, I'm not necessarily using the service to play these, you know, must have triple a titles it's Mm -hmm. oh this looks like a fun experience that i can dick around with like an hour or two but i feel like if i want an experience that i'm gonna dick around for an hour or two that's before bed on a steam deck Mm -hmm. where even if it does come to game pass it's maybe i'll wait till it's on a steam sale for Mm -hmm. so i can play it on the steam deck in a more comfortable environment is there no way to run um Game Pass on Steam Deck? I'm surprised that didn't that hasn't right? been like. There's nothing out. native. You can do the cloud streaming stuff. Sure. Uh, I see. Which I I feel like the Asus ROG Ally, uh, I believe is what it's I know I, one of my f- coworkers has purchased a one, but that since that, you know, just runs Windows as its like OS, mm-hmm. you can have native uh Game Pass things there. And I think that if I had, you know, a ROG a- Ally, I think that would make me more uh that would kind of fill this hole that i currently have with game pass but you know you know that was what i wanted to bring to the table this week in terms of gaming <laughs> boys. but yeah we'll we'll see how game pass turns out but matt mm-hmm. you ready for, for that starfield episode yo i'm ready i'm ready for whenever that comes out you joining us for that starfield episode rakush i think i'm gonna try that game out yeah okay cool but guys hmm we're not here to talk about game pass we're here to talk about our zelda spoiler cast <laughs> wait really no. <laughs> <laughs> you scared me there, Matt. <laughs> because I haven't finished Zelda. Zelda check. Rikush, have you finished Zelda? Not even close. Matt, nope. Zelda check. No. Cool. I I think I have uh, a little bit to go still. 
I have a lot to go still, but that's okay, boys, because it's the summer tasting season, Matt. Mm -hmm. Summer season, 2023. We're here, but but to start off this occasion, here's some zipper ASMR for you. (laughs) Matt, Uh I finally brought your pack of a keychain. Oh, nice. Rakush, I gave you the power chibi uh, so, in pure anime <laughs> style on some train tracks. And I w- and a train passed me by right after. And Rakush, not sure if you noticed, that train was really close. Dude, no, I noticed it too. I was like, yo, what the... Ble-? Like, it was... I saw you as well. And I'm like, yo, that's... Dude, whoa, holy shit. Anyways, uh, funny story about the chibi chains out there, right? Because, okay. like, you were texting me before. Because we were going to, the, like, the wrestling show yep. in Toronto. And... You were texting me like, yo, bro, if we meet up, I'll just give it to you, like, you know, when I meet you. And I was, like, super nervous because I'm like, yo, bro, I don't want people knowing that I watch anime. <laughs> like, you know, I don't want the security guards, like, judging me and stuff as well. And then I felt really bad because then, like, you carried it around and you gave it to me at the end. And I'm like, oh, this is, like, perfectly fine. Like, this was, I thought it was, like, you know, just, it's like. Power in a bikini. <laughs> yeah, like, I was a little stressed out about that. And I was like, uh-oh. But no, it was fine. Even it check was our fun. bags. And the, uh, that, that's, we can save that for another time. But, Matt. Mm-hmm. Summer season's here. Let, let, let's do a little taste test, boys. Let's, you know, drink these anime, swish them around in our mouth, and then spit them out like the garbage they are. I Speaking feel like of moist. <laughs> we should have been doing this a lot, Matt, where we, we'll talk about some of the summer season anime debuts that have happened, you know, this week, a few weeks, like last week. But I think that a good test would be does this anime pass the first episode test Mm -hmm. so i guess like real quick i do want to ask you jaren because i know in previous episodes like matt and i have talked and he said he's got a one episode uh kind of thing for him like a test i am at like three episodes for shows are you at the one episode test as well for me i to a degree where if the first episode hooks me I'll give it to the third episode to see if I fully stick with it. Just because, guys, we, we've watched our fair share of anime. We're no, <laughs> we're, we're no anime experts, but I've had some seasons where the quality has notably dropped after, you know, three, four, and even five. Uh-huh. Yeah. So th- that's kind of where I'm at, where you need to have a good hook. But if you can't carry that momentum for at least a quarter of your season then not gonna buy into it especially true if it's like a 24 because Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a 24 is an investment but matt Mm -hmm. what can we possibly invest in god my filipino was coming out there (laughs) (laughs) what can we possibly invest in this season i mean jaren i think that if we're gonna talk about potentially investing in an anime oh my god I think that the one that we have to talk about first oh, no. is Reborn as a Vending Machine, I Now Wander the Dungeon. <sighs> Matt, mm-hmm. I wasn't here for the Isekai episode because <laughs> I I can't believe we're still running with this goof. I was Isekai <laughs> myself at that time. Uh-huh. But you know how I feel about Isekais. But to bring up everyone up to speed... I feel like I've been reading a lot of isekai lately, especially of the villainous, you know, mm-hmm. uh, degree, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I've read a lot of the, villainous manga. The subcategory. Yeah, the subcategory. And I I think I'm over the isekai genre at the moment. Uh-huh. Just because, guys, it's all the same. Oh, Jared, that's what's so good about it. <laughs> and Matt, uh-huh. when I saw the show art, for vending machine Mm -hmm. i thought oh man this is stupid i need to watch it okay yeah good 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 good. Mm -hmm. i thought uh this is an isekai i don't know about you guys but when inanimate objects have those overtly cartoony eyes on them Uh that's an instant turn off for me so already (laughs) vending machine wasn't batting that well (laughs) but by the end of this episode matt Uh it checked marked a lot of boxes that I enjoy. Mm-hmm. It gave us some skill sets. Uh-huh. It gave us essentially the rules of how the isekai worked. Uh-huh. And it gave us the quirky sidekick character. Mm-hmm. And I think that was just enough for me to at least give this until episode three uh-huh. of Vending Machine. Because Matt, for the most part, 
pretty much an information heavy episode. Yeah. And I feel like with a for better or for worse with the isekai genre, that's essentially your first episode. You have to set up the rules yeah of how this kind of game plays out. Mhm. And Matt, mm-hmm. how do you feel about the world that was not overtly set up, but set up just enough throughout to give you your bearings for Vending Machine as a anime? Jaren, straight up, this world that this person got isekai into is the most basic of an isekai world that you could get. It is just kind of a generic Japanese fantasy um, place basically medieval europe sort of yeah and i don't with monsters in it and i don't know i like it i think it's a i like that they didn't go or they didn't seem to go too too crazy with the um i guess the magic integration so far yeah and i don't know it this is this is right up my alley and jaren since the start of this segment rikush has looked like he wanted to die (laughs) Rikush, what did you think of Boxo being a vending machine of Taku? It literally starts off with him going, oh no, that vending machine is going to fall off a cliff. Because he's a vending machine of Taku. And then like he sees a reflection of himself in a puddle of water and then just like fanboys out at like how immaculate the vending machine itself looks. Jaren has already said, Rikush, he's an, he's an, an isekai otaku. He's a... He's a vending machine otaku. You know what the you know what those eyes remind me of? Like cars. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, but also like you remember like years back there was this whole meme where they'd put like anime eyes on sharks. Oh yes, yes, that's, that's a good what meme. this reminds yeah. me of. Yeah, that's a good point, Matt. Mm-hmm. What do you think of? Oh gosh, Matt. This is why I can't be a VTuber uh, degenerate mm-hmm. because for some reason. I can't remember the sidekick character's name. Oh, is I can't it, either. Is it Lapis or Lappy yeah, or Lammy? It. Lapis. Lapis? Yeah. Oh, I'm okay. surprised you remember. Well, he said it, so I remember. Oh, okay. I didn't. I don't have a lot of memory. I blacked out for like 23 minutes. How do you think of our our initial introduction to the hunter character? I mean, I like her. She's like standard, strong, Genki character. Yeah. And I think that's like a very safe archetype as a uh, your sidekick character. What do you think of uh, our hint of the uh, lolly character from Nobility? I mean that who's a Sundari, of course. Of course she is. That 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 seems about right, Jaren. Like I'm surprised that the lolly isn't <laughs> isn't in here earlier. Point taken. And final question: hmm. In this episode, we see how his isekai magic works, and I actually yeah. liked the how the mechanics behind this vending machine where. For every, he needs to, of course, be a vendor. He needs to sell his items, sell his wares, and then he can either, he can buy his upgrades, but I think the most fucked up part is he can buy power and then buy the ability to fix himself, which, Uh from a min-max perspective, is actually really, not gonna lie, I got a little worried for our boy, Boxo, in the beginning when he was just at the lake, because... How how is he going to make money mm-hmm. when frogs mm-hmm. are attacking him? Mm-hmm. What did you think of him choosing barrier as his skill? That makes sense. Like in the moment, that makes sense. Yes, I'm so surprised that there are two isekai anime where the main character's power is barrier this season. Really? Yeah. Okay. But before we potentially get to that anime, guys, mm-hmm. our taste test for vending machine, Matt. Uh huh. Does it pass the episode one taste test? This passes the taste test so well that I'm gonna I'm gonna stock up on twelve. Okay, Rakush, where are you with this uh, with the vending machine? My marriage prospects are taking an irreparable hit right now. So, uh, so that's not that much of a difference, I think. Well, God damn, <laughs> Matt, I'm all in. I'm with you, Jared. Okay, I think the thing that sold me on this the most is that it seems to me like he can't do anything on his own. Yes. I think the fact that he isn't overpowered in that way is very important to me. And I also feel like it feels like it's not going to be a battle isekai. Yeah. It feels like it's going to be a slice of life isekai, and I'm far like even more about it now. I can't believe how in-depth you've gotten into describing the show. It's, dude, it's an easy, come on. Okay, if this guy is a <laughs> vending machine otaku, I'm an isekai otaku. 
<laughs> like, hey man, he likes what he likes. Yo. Uh, Matt and I also like vending machines. Yo, Japanese vending machines are sick. Yep, they are. Like I I really I'm mostly just looking forward to seeing what he's gonna stock in future episodes. And then when I go to Japan, hopefully this year, I'm gonna be like, Oh yeah, y'all gonna go jam on some of those, I guess. Honestly. So do do you think they're gonna be doing some like our IRL lore dump on like famous vending machines from Japan. You know what? Show. I wouldn't be surprised, but now that you've said this, I'm going to be tilted if they don't have promotional vending machines of this guy in Japan. Oh, that would be really good. I'm really hoping for and that. And they just rotate his stock with what he had in the show. Oh, my oh God. man. But okay. So, so far, me and Matt have bought in 12. Uh, 12 se- episodes of Vending Machine. Rikush. Mm-hmm. I'll, Rikush I'll, be there, I'll be there for episode two, but I just don't see what, like, how is this gimmick going to go 12 episodes? It's, it, honestly, I, I'm also, like, thinking, like, a step back away from, like, the kind of meme in the it, I am looking at this more as a slice of life kind of yes. show, which um, I, like, like to begin with. And I think I'll, it's going to be very, I don't know, easygoing in It's that really sense. bad. I'll be there for episode two. Okay, Rikush. <laughs> now that, we we want to lift you up like how our girl Lapis lifted up Boxo. Oh so okay. Rakush, what's a what's an anime this season that you tasted? I mean, there's a couple that I really want to talk about like in a bit, but I, let's go with one that you and I have both watched. Matt, you might have watched it as well. Mm. Um, Undead Mur- Undead Girl Murder Farce is that what it's no, called? I, I believe it's just Undead Murder Farce. Yeah, Undead I it was Murder Undead Farce. Girl. I thought it was like Undead Girl Murder Farce or something like that. I'm going off of what I saw on Crunchyroll. Yeah, Undead or... Murder Farce. Oh, I thought the title screen had Undead Girl. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Murder Farce. Yes. Murder Farce, yeah. Um, It was not on my radar before the season started, Same. but like I am coming off a season where I had a solid like five shows that I actually really enjoyed. Mm-hmm. Um, Like really, really enjoyed. And so like I didn't just want to like go back down to like watching two mm-hmm. you know um so i was i've been trying out a bunch i've been trying out some slop um outside of the vending machine one but like i've been just like trying to see what catches my attention so i gave the first episode of this one a try it's interesting nothing really happens in episode one except for like kind of setting up the plot and like you know setting up kind of like the dynamic and like the relationship between the three main characters in this series. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess to describe the plot real quick, they are kind of like monsters or like one person is like a half human, half monster that was like experimented on by this one guy. All of them are looking for the same person for their, like, you know, their own reasons. And so by the end of the episode, they've just kind of teamed up and there's some kind of power up for the uh, half human, half monster dude. Yeah. And that's where it's going to go from there, I guess. It's interesting. I think, like, the art style is cool. I think, like, the character designs are neat. I think the storytelling, the pacing of it, even though nothing happened, was all right, I guess. Like, I didn't... It didn't need anything crazy happening, Mm -hmm. but um, it didn't follow, like, the typical, like, first episode monster of the week kind of stuff that some of these shows tend to have either. Mm -hmm. So, it was fine. I think in my opinion, that this first episode made, like, one cardinal mistake of showing the opening in the first episode. Especially where they showed it. Interesting. I think that the reveal of the girl, like, the birdcage, was they shouldn't have had the opening at the start of this episode. So what Matt's referring to... um, I I mean, it's kind of mild spoilers because people are going to know in the synopsis anyways, but... One of the three characters is an immortal girl that is just the head of the person. Her body was taken away by the same person that experimented on the main character, the mm-hmm. dude. And that's how they kind of have connected with each other for a common goal. But the thing is, what Matt is saying is like the intro happens, you see the reveal of the headless or like the head only girl. Mm-hmm. So like that reveal in the actual episode doesn't hit the same way. Yeah. And yeah, I, I kind of see what you're saying. Like, because for the most part, I feel like shows don't really normally show their opening in the first yeah. episode anymore. So to have that happen was like really, really jarring. Yeah. Or they use like the intro as the ending for the first episode. Yeah, yeah. I would have more so expected an intro as the ending yeah. for the first episode. What, what did you think about it, Jared? 
So for me personally, this was really high. I, I came off really high on mur- off of Murder Farce once I finished the episode, mostly because, as you guys said, you know, n- not going to say anything uh, new. This was an info dump episode, and it kind of sets up the world perfectly. I think in the beginning, just the scene gave me some heavy shield hero vibes when the he discover when uh Ralph Talia for the first time kind of in that monster slaver realm because you know it does come it is set up from this whole traveling like circus troupe kind of carnival of freaks aesthetic but we do meet the main character Saguru and then eventually we meet the battle maid and the head in the cage uh Aya and I think what really made this episode for me is just the back and forth between Siguru and Aya, and I really adored the chemistry between those two. For a info dumpy episode, I norm- normally that's the that's like a death sentence to me, where if it's too much uh, words and not enough action, I'll typically fall off. But I honestly like the chemistry between those two, where it really worked for me. Uh, the final scene, um, the kissing scene, uh, mm-hmm. because I'm a pervert, <laughs> I thought that was actually a really well done scene. Just that little twitch from uh, Aya's maid as well, I think really sealed it for me, where there is a fun dy- there will be a fun dynamic between um, the three of these characters, just yeah. from that little interaction, <laughs> because I love Mia some dairy maid as well. Jared? I don't know what this says about me. Yeah. But when they were leading up to that kiss scene, Jared, I thought it wasn't going to be a kiss. I thought that they were going, they were going to, in, in, you know, in more of a vein of an anime that I was expecting, I thought they were just going to make him spit in his mouth. Yeah. Even, even like the see angle that. that like he lifted her up at, at the end, I was still kind of half expecting like some kind of punchline at the end of it. But yeah, no, it just ended up being like this real like, um, moonlight, like kissing under the moonlight moment. I was like, huh. I don't know. I really expected some dummy mommy spitting in his mouth sort of thing going on there. We still will have an entire season ahead of us. Who knows how that relationship will, you know, unfold. But yeah, for the most part, it is. It's it, it's an anime, of course. You will have, as you said, Rakush. The initial conflict is Aya wants um, Suguru to kill him because he's a half Oni and only... To kill her. Yeah, to kill her because Onis apparently can kill immortals. But from some, you know, sick twist of fate, they all figure out that the person in question uh, all ties them together and it becomes a, you know, revenge plot, which I'm really looking forward to. I do agree with Matt that it was unfortunate um, that the OP did play in the beginning here. I think it didn't bother me as much just because going in, I knew it was going to be a separated head in this bird cage. But yeah, the actual hand to hand combat stuff, not the greatest. Yeah. But again, I, I, I was mostly sold on the chemistry between Suguru and Aya. So I am buying into the, tw- the, the entire season here as well. Your note on like the action itself. I actually kind of thought it was like really cool how like at least the choreography of it. Oh, was the cool. choreography I thought was maybe like, the animation good. wasn't necessarily the best, but I do yeah. kind of Chore- appreciate choreography was good. But yeah. like him pouring the, the animation... beer into the gun itself was like a yeah. really neat kind of mm-hmm. like thing. Um, but I yeah, I don't know if the animation on this show is going to be yeah. all that like extravagant or anything like mm-hmm. that. So yeah, and of course I come with the bias because I I just came from of course Demon Slayer. Sure. Season uh-huh. three, so there are a lot of similarities in style, at least. But yeah, uh, Rakush Taste Toss, how how does it fare for you? I, I'm sticking around. Uh, I'm really excited to see like basically three Japanese characters in a European setting, right? Right. Like literal Europe. So like that, I'm really looking forward to <laughs> the cultural exchange that is probably going to happen starting next episode. So yeah, mm-hmm. I'm Matt, around. How about you? Uh, I'm dropped. Uh, really interesting. I this episode. Nothing hooked me in okay. it. Uh, so I think that this is really going to be more of a... I'm going to like wait and see what the chatter is about it, but I'm not going to uh, really follow or like watch it unless I hear like some really, really great things about it. Okay. This this series also seems like a perfect replacement to me for um, 
Hell's Paradise, um, Jigoku Raku from the mm-hmm. last season. That's what that's the kind of the feel I was getting. As yeah. Well. So like for me, it feels like okay, this will take over from that, and I can mm-hmm. watch this weekly. So like that's why I feel very e- like I can keep watching it easily. Oh yeah, yeah. I also feel like that that kind of link between those two is the reason I'm so um, easy to drop this one. Okay, fair. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Fair Sounds enough. like you're keeping it as well, Jaren. Yep. Yeah. I-, I bought in. I bought in. I love me a good chemistry between your protagonist and a Sundari maid. So, Matt, mm-hmm. what else was on your plate this week? I think that me and Rikushi can actually go in on Go Hands. Oh, my. F- okay. This, uh, uh, these guys, man. These two shows that uh, Go Hands has put into production this season. So, Go Hands Laboratory is a studio. Um, it, like, they're working on two different animes. Yes. And um, the names of their animes are The Girl I Like Forgot Her Glasses, and the second one is The Masterful Cat is Depressed Again Today. Mm-hmm. This is a great example of, like, just reading the synopsis is not going to give you a good idea of what kind of energy the shows are going to have. Yes. You know, where it's like, I, I think, like, I watched The Girl I Like Forgot Her Glasses first. I mm-hmm. was kind of going into it thinking... This reminds me a lot of Yabai Yatsu from the last season. Yeah. So, like, I've been doing a lot of, like, that cross-comparison between mm-hmm. seasons. So, I'm like, okay, this could be another one I would watch. And, like, the first couple of minutes is just, like, this real, like, over-the-top, fancy, advanced animation style. Or, like, they're going with, like, these very out-of-the-box, like, out-of-the-norm camera angles. where it's And, like, they're also doing, like, weird distortion on the character's legs in, like, this 3D space and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's very disorienting in a way that at the beginning I was like, I might need to stop watching this right away. But it Uh does, thankfully, after the title card, eases it up a lot more. Um, But then, like, the second show, The Masterful Cat is Depressed Again Today, when you just look at the poster of that one, you think it's, like, your typical, like... Um, middle of the road animation, like slice of life thing, yeah. where you're like, oh yeah, it's just comfort, like comfort food kind of mm-hmm. thing, right? And the same thing happens in the first couple of minutes of this show, and like within five seconds, I'm like, what the fuck? I did not know Gohans was working on this one as well, and it almost like yeah. made me want to drop it immediately because I was like, I don't know if I could do this animation style for two shows that I thought were gonna be comfy as hell. I really, really like this animation style, like. It's not bad. It's just very jarring. And, Uh like, it really is, like, it takes me aback a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, I know previously in the 2019 season of uh, Mistake Zone, I tried watching Doubles and I tried watching uh, Handshakers, which were both by Gohans. And I really kind of only stayed on them because I liked the animation. The stories in those were, like, really not great. Their pedigree of coming also from K and, like, K Return of Kings was like really, really getting me hyped to do for those two shows. And to like realize that I wasn't into them was really disappointing. But to know that like that animation style is back in both of these shows, I am, I am like so on board for both of these. Plus I kind of like the subject matter for both of these shows as well. I like the um I like the Magnificent Cat subject matter. Mm-hmm. Um I think like there is it's got a lot working for it. I think mm-hmm. like the main character is like this like office lady like you know she kind of lives at home by herself unless you count like this giant cat that looks after her in which case she doesn't live by herself but like the cat is fantastic the yeah. voice actor for the cat is fantastic because mm-hmm. there's just like a couple of grunts and sound effects that the cat makes that i'm like fantastic love it love mm-hmm. all about it mm-hmm. um and like the animation has eased up in a way that's like I'm, it's not like I'm watching a Gemma Rockwai video from, like, the 1990s where, like, you know, it's using, like, weird fish lens angles and, like, distortion on, like, the movements and stuff like that. Yeah, I found the animation in Magnificent Cat was a lot more normal Yeah, compared to uh, Glasses. It was more seamless, I found, where it's like, okay, yeah, like, you're still doing something, like maybe needlessly fancy but like something fancy like there's a shot where like the girl opens up her fridge and she's looking at like a bunch of frozen gyoza mm-hmm. and like for some reason the camera just like pans into her or zooms into her as well and i'm like that's not necessary but sure all right why not mm-hmm. but like it still kind of works at least like within like you know the context and stuff like that yeah um 
and it, it might work in the glasses one as well, but like mm-hmm. there is just something about the characters in that one that I'm less mm-hmm, mm-hmm. sold on them. Maybe because mm-hmm. I've watched so many of those like, you know, just like typical coming of age high school stories yeah. now that it's like Oh I'm yo, starting to get very picky about that stuff. I I eat that up, Rakush. I need to I need to mm, mm, oh mm, gotta eat up all that youth I can now that I'm an old ass man. Yeah, I, I I need that slop as well, right? Where like I'm cheering for like these kids to like do well and succeed and shit. Mm-hmm. I'm probably going to keep watching both of these shows. I think the cat one kind of has a spot in my rotation if things go the way I'm thinking it will for the next mm-hmm. couple of episodes. Glasses is kind of 50-50 right now, depending mm-hmm. on how the next couple of episodes go. Because with that one, I'm just not sure what the story is going to be beyond the gimmick of this girl literally forgets her glasses. The story is that... Yeah, the story is that the girl like forgets her yeah. glasses and that's how these two bond. But yeah. did you watch either of these, Jaren? I did not watch any of these, and I was going to ask, are these full, you know, 20, 30-minute episodes, yeah. or are yeah, these, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, full episodes. Um, So, the one with the glasses, I guess it's important to note that, like, the dude has a crush on this girl. Of course. And she keeps forgetting her glasses, but sits next to him in class, and so, like, she's kind of also, like, a bit of a airhead, and she does typical anime stuff where she keeps getting close to him and all that kind of stuff, so... Mm-hmm. That's the whole story. And, like, I don't know how that's going to go for, like, 12 episodes. Like, Are, I don't even know how it's going to go to the third episode. Based but, on the yeah. first episode, is, is it one of those segment-based ones where you yeah. have, like, three? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, it's like that kind of show. Right. So yeah. not not just one full episode. Yeah, just because... Yeah, I'm, I'm curious how a gimmick like that would... Like, it kind yeah. of flows in the same way as uh, Komi-san. Like right. Flows. Very Fair much enough. so. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. But the characters aren't as charming as Comey, I would say. Like, that's my one thing is I am, um, I'm kind of hoping the second, like, I'll still give it three episodes, but I'm kind of hoping they introduce the side characters and you see mm-hmm. a couple of more likable characters because right now, I think the glasses girl doesn't have a lot going for her beyond I forgot my glasses. Mm-hmm. And the main character has a real, like, typical like you know shaky nerdy character uh-huh, uh-huh. kind of thing going for him but like in a way that like even by the end of this episode because in the first episode you at least want to see some kind of development in the yeah. character the plot has development the character doesn't really have that much development and it's mm-hmm, kind of like mm-hmm. i don't know if i like this dude as much so mm-hmm. yeah okay yeah by the way you were describing it i thought these were just like 14 minutes but you watched them back oh. to back like they mm-hmm. were paired up to them right but uh, I might pitch check out glasses. I'm not, I'm not sold on the kitty one yet. But <laughs> Matt, how, how about you? Are you sold on any of these? Or I mean, I'm like all in on right. um, glasses because I I like really enjoy the manga. I'm recent oh, on, okay. or up to date on the manga. Like it is one of my favorite kind of just like feller fluffs okay. kind of mangas. The cat one, I conceptually like it, but the title is weird for what I've seen so far. Because the thing that weirds me out is that. I understand, hey, this is the masterful cat. But the thing that wears me out of the title, and I'm scared that this is going to become against our rule journey of no sad anime. Yeah. Which is like, it's okay, what is the full title? The masterful cat is now like depressed or something? Is depressed again today. Yeah. Like, yeah, like I didn't see any depression in the first episode. Yeah. Something about that makes me feel like I, I'm going to want to drop this anime. But I, I think I am going to be in for like the. Uh, episode two, episode three, ride. Okay. This. Can we talk about depressing anime now? I mean, if you have a depressing anime to go to, kinda. It's my only segue into like the next two. Fair enough. They're they're fantastic, but it's my only segue into them. Okay. Um. So I feel like these are the two like big mainstream ones this season. Uh, Bleach: Thousand Year War is coming back, and Jujutsu Kaisen season two is uh, back as well. Both of them are episode one is out at this point. Does the ED compare it to Lost in Paradise? <laughs> for Bleach? No, for, uh, for Jujutsu. For Jujutsu. No. Ooh, no, no. I don't think so. No. I mean, it's it's good intro and outro. I don't think it's as good. Yeah, no. I don't think anything no. really like stands to opening one or uh, ending one. Opening of one was so good. Yeah. Oh, my God. I, Dude, it's, it's just it's not hit that same note for openings, but... Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm really excited for these two shows coming out together as well. Like, there's something almost like... It's been a while since I've done, like, a sports analogy, so I'm going to do, like, a sports analogy. One of the cooler kind of, like, NBA moments from, like, the late 90s was uh, Allen Iverson basically, like, 
a young Allen Iverson is starting to play against like, you know, some of these like legends like Michael Jordan and stuff. And there's one where um he like crosses over MJ or something like that. And like it's just like one of these like cool moments in NBA history where like this young up and comer is like doing his thing against like, you know, this legend who's like five championships deep at this point. It's mm-hmm. it's terrific. And like to me, Jujutsu Kaisen is kind of like this young up and comer mm-hmm. that's doing like, you know, it against like this legend which is bleach and like it's almost like these two like things are meant destined for greatness like one has already kind of like achieved it one is well on its way to like you know becoming one of those like all-time classic shonen shows that like everybody talks about and watches as well i think jujutsu kaisen's there already i yeah. think so as well yeah i guess it's I just... based off of it's the so first good. season yeah dude like that first season's amazing the movie is really good as well like there were parts of the movie where i'm like i don't know why like what's going on with the pacing but it's still like for movie purposes for like a lot of these like shonen series like mm-hmm. it hits so many cool notes there as well and like kind of seeing like you know because to me jujutsu kaisen is in many ways in this age what bleach was in like the early 2000s Man, you're really linking a lot of hey this old anime is like this it new really anime. is no it absolutely like that's to me it really feels like bleach has kind of come back and suddenly like seeing bleach animated and produced the way modern anime gets animated and produced mm-hmm. is almost like vindicating to see because like there, i always kind of had this belief that like despite the fact that the manga kind of got really shitty especially this arc that like they're covering is kind of like really dumb and like really out there and like back in the day like people thought it was not a great ending Mm -hmm. being handled really well but in a way where it's like bleach felt like it was ahead of its time Mm -hmm. and now it finally feels like it's amongst like you know the shows that it influenced amongst the writers that it influenced you're finally seeing it get the treatment that it does deserve even if the arc might end up being kind of like this is ridiculous. I love every second of how ridiculous it is kind of thing. Uh-huh. It does deserve the treatment that it's getting. Speaking of like amazing openings and closings, this season of Bleach, it's fantastic. Like I highly recommend like if you're not going to watch the show, just at least go listen to like the opening and closing. It's so good. And like just even seeing like, you know, just how the opening art style is like so trendy and so like unique and like in its own like category in its own class and stuff as well and then like kind of also seeing like Jujutsu Kaisen do a lot of that too it's really cool to see these two come out at the same time like Mm -hmm. I really do see a lot of similarities between these two as far as just like uh, thematic executions are concerned and what they kind of mean in the landscape in their respective eras and stuff as well so um, those ones I'm like here for the full seasons and I think uh, Bleach is 12 JJK is two cores but like 24 back to back episodes yeah and it like both of them started out like real strong as well so like Mm -hmm. i am super excited for these two and can't wait to see what else comes out of it one thing i will say about Jujutsu Kaisen 2 and then i'll hand it over to you guys but like one thing about watching the first episode of jjk 2 it was kind of annoying to watch it because watching that and then thinking on what the chainsaw man anime ended up being i feel real sad that like chainsaw man's anime or like the production of it did not end up kind of hitting what jjk is right now as well and like there's a lot of like similarities between the first episodes like plot like monster of the week kind of thing and like a two episode plot in chainsaw man with like the never-ending hallway and stuff like that Mm -hmm. and just seeing how like one was executed versus like the other it was kind of sad like, I kind of got sad being like, damn, man, like, I really wish Shane Summer had kind of, like, had a little bit more of, like, that polish that I felt like could have taken it from, like, okay, fine, some good to, like, fantastic. And, like, it just, I don't think Shane Summer ever hit that. So, like, watching JJK2, it was kind of, mm-hmm. it sucks. But that was my rant. Sorry. Are you buying into these, Matt? I'm going to keep following JJK, I right. think. I've always just been like, even when Bleach's uh, first core came back, I was very loosely following it. Um, so I think I'm just going to be very loosely following um, this like second one for Bleach as well. Did you watch either of them, Jared? Nope. I'm, I'm probably not going to buy into As much as I do enjoy my, did enjoy my time with JJK, I, I don't think I'm going to go into it for season two. Um, Bleach was never 
that was never my anime growing up. Uh, mm-hmm. It was the name. It was a name I would name drop if I wanted to gauge if someone was really about this life growing up. Uh-huh. But uh-huh. Uh, not for me, unfortunately. But to see Rakush's enthusiasm, you know, maybe if I'm bored one day, I'll, I'll catch an episode or two. But yeah, not for me this season. Bleach also holds like a sentimental value in my memory as well, because um, or maybe like, you know, I need to blame a uh, friend of the show, Freddie, for this, but like. One of the first things that, like, he's one of my oldest friends as well. So, like, the first, one of the first things that we connected on was, like, outside of Dragon Ball Z, Bleach was kind of, like, the first, like, shonen anime that I, like, really got into. And he's the guy who, like, burned the 26 episodes for me back then on, like, those, like, DVDs. And, like, uh, that's how I, like, ended up watching it and stuff. And that's how I ended up getting into a lot more anime as well. Mm -hmm. Um, So, like... I definitely have like a sentimental place for that show, right? Like it's oh, I'm yeah, definitely yeah. coming from a place of like nostalgia, but also seeing like, oh man, like the way that they're animating stuff, the style that they're using, just like the uh, art direction, the polish, everything that it has now, mm-hmm. it just kind of feels like almost vindicating for me in a way that like, um, I like vindicating because like, you know, this got me into the mm-hmm. mistake, you know, genre uh-huh. of, uh, I don't know what you would call it, but yeah, like, um, it's it's just it's cool. It's cool to watch it. Um, is it gonna be great at the end? I am kind of curious because reading the manga, I was like, this is not a good story arc, right? But like, <laughs> um, am I gonna enjoy it? I don't know. Like, I'm kind of curious how I'm gonna react to some of these things because I've completely forgotten like ninety percent of the plot from this last arc, except for like some like big moments in it. Yeah, the canon events. Yeah, yeah, like the, yeah. yeah, I guess. Um, so. Yeah, you know, like, there is definitely, like, a sentimental place there. Jaren, I'm kind of curious. Um, What's up? Because if, like, for me, Bleach was kind of what got me into, like, the anime expanded universe or whatever you want to call it. Like, was there a show like that for you? Like, outside of, like, you know, just the standard, like, stuff that used to come on YTV? I think for, I think I said this, Matt, if you remember our mm-hmm. very first Mistake Zone OVA. Uh, it is, it was probably... Bex Mongolian Chop Squad, and that's why uh, I'm not the biggest fan of Shonen's. I think I said that, like, especially one of the earlier episodes where you know I grew up with Dragon Ball, uh, but it was more so that slice of life, uh, most also the band motif yeah. that really got me into kind of anime as a whole. And then, mm-hmm. of course, you know, once we got K on, once we got to working, I think that's when it especially sunk my teeth. Uh, or it got me to sink my teeth into it as a whole. But that brings me to the last new anime I watched this week, which is Well Welcome Territory. And you guys will probably not be surprised. It's the latest Bang Dream season. Classic. Which is a spinoff of sorts. And I'm, Matt, you know Mm -hmm. me. I kind mm-hmm. of message you week to week about just Bang Dream in general and how after consuming this mixed media franchise for half a decade now, gross. Okay. I'm <laughs> I'm in this weird area where I think I told you once the next anniversary update hits, I'm probably yeah. done. But then they announced the to tie back to what Riku said. The next collab event in Japan, which hap- which started, I think, last week, which was a Chainsaw Man collab. And one, card art gorgeous. <laughs> uh, so th- that's when I'll quit, Matt. That- I promise I'm going to quit uh-huh. <laughs> after the Chainsaw Man collab. Yeah. Which characters? <laughs> it's all... Of- well, of course, uh, Ran from Afterglow will be the Denji. Um, I forget whose power, but honestly, her card art is literally power that's how because mostly with these collab events it's the girls from bang dream cosplaying as the character um i think rui is a gender band of some male character and uh sayo from uh, rosalia is makima of course you have to have her and then rimi from pop and party uh is some girl who holds a gun. I don't. I, I didn't watch Chainsaw Man. <laughs> so, card art gorgeous. And Matt, Matt, I promise after that collab, I'm done. Jared, because I feel like I'm like I don't know the spouse of a smoker. 
<laughs> or it's like no yo yo one more pack and then i'm gonna quit yo after this after this yo babe we're done we're done i'm not i'm done smoking and i just know in my heart jared he's never gonna quit in a few weeks the that time i was reincarnated as a slime collab comes to ian at least with the chainsaw man collab i have around a year to save up matt <laughs> jared, it's a whole year <laughs> In a few weeks, I'm going to tell you that I don't even have a hundred pulls saved, oh, and we need three hundred for pity. Uh-huh. Uh, so don't be surprised when my next Jaren Capitalist Pig update is disgusting. You know, I already spent money on it, so I guess I can't quit now. You know, I might as well wait like I don't know another year until I get rid of all these extra pulls I have. So, but I digress, you guys. <laughs> Bang Dream, It's My Go, is the latest season, and this focuses on the latest band to the Bang Dream franchise. And this is kind of where I'm coming from when I say I'm at this weird crossroads of Bang Dream, just because, of course, Bang Dream started with five core bands, they've added two more, and then now, I believe, with My Go, and there's going to be one more added to the game... Um, that's going to be nine bands in all. It's kind of, this is essentially Bang Dream the Next Generation, just because for better or for Mm -hmm. worse, as I say, you, as much as you can hold like the same role you have for a while, given that Bang Dream, especially with a lot of the core bands being able to play their own instruments and actually being performing bands, we're probably going to get to a point where those core bands can't keep going at that rate and you need to have new bands to keep the franchise as a whole afloat for your performances and in terms of the game already adding morphonica and raise the Solomon over like the past few years you know i've been able to kind of build my roster but again with new card rarities new bands that's when it kind of hits that point of a gotcha game where it's I can't keep up with the meta anymore. And likewise, when it comes to a new anime focusing on one of the new bands, it's, oh, this is the next generation. I don't know if... that That's not my, the, the five bands I grew, grew up with, quote-unquote. Mm-hmm. And when you have a new band in such a... in an well-established franchise and in a slice-of-life band genre as a whole, you guys know we're we're kind of getting into you know, known territory where how many different band stories can you realistically tell? Not only through an anime, but through in-game events that happen on a weekly basis. So Uh when the first episode of My Go starts, it's your classic, oh, one of the girls is late for practice. She has a breakdown and says she doesn't want to be in this band anymore. And then it all comes out. There's band drama saying, oh, this wasn't actually fun. I didn't actually want to do this. And I thought, okay, I've kind of seen these like bits and pieces in like previous Bang Dream game events. Mm-hmm. Why would I, you know, rewatch this for a new band? Why would I want to see the same story be told all over again? <laughs> Jared, I feel like I'm gonna get tired for how many Isekai I watch. <laughs> but and and but again, this is the next generation because this essentially happens after the time skip of okay, a lot of the bands they graduated high school, they're college students, and for the most part, that's the story I want to see because high school girl bands or high school bands in general well you know that's known territory in the band dream franchise i want to see in general college p uh bands and how they navigate that how they navigate potentially not going to school to career and for them to bring my go and be another high school band story i was also kind of wary about that Mm -hmm. and it was after the introduction of one of the new characters Chahaya, where i thought okay i'm gonna give this a chance because again bang dream you have 40 girls and they've all you know been relatively cordial to one another you know i think the worst quote-unquote worst character was choo choo from raise the who was just more uh goal driven compared to some of the other girls but with Chahaya. She's essentially a transfer student. She transfers right before Golden Week. And I don't know what this says about me, you guys, but she is one of the more compelling Bang Dream characters to be introduced because, honestly, she's an insecure, terrible person. 
Oh, just like <laughs> just like you. Because Damn. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And, and maybe that's why it's resonating with me because <laughs> Bang Dream again, it's happy. Let's all have fun. Let's all chase our dreams. Let's all perform together. And mm-hmm. Tahaya, so the scene that really sets it apart for me is she is scanning the room when it comes to lunchtime and she's thinking, okay, where's a click that I can like join? Mm-hmm. Where's someone I can insert myself? And then she finds a group of girls. They start talking. And then when she realizes that they're talking about, you know, the quirky girl that she met earlier in class who left at lunch to go to her astronomy club, Chahaya instantly says, wait, why aren't they talking about me anymore? And throughout the episode, we kind of see her motivations play out that are kind of anti what you come to expect from Bang Dream, where she um, she realizes, oh, everyone in this school is part of a band for some reason, which I think is a nice callback to the fact that you have all the core bands from the previous seasons now graduating, but they're, mm-hmm. you know them performing in bands have inspired this new generation of girls and it's her going oh can the group of girls she sits with is ask her oh hey do you want to come perform with us but then she realizes wait they already have a lead vocalist and lead guitarist that means i'm gonna stay stand to the side (laughs) and she you know politely declines it Uh and then throughout the whole episode it's her trying to find a new band like members to join her band but she straight up says Hey, you can play any instruments. You can't do lead vocals. You can't do lead guitar. That's my thing. Or when she talks to, you know, the quirky girl, Tamori, she's like, hey, you should join my band. And it's her doing an internal monologue of, oh, man, I'll have the quirky girl in my band. That's going to make me super popular oh, where <laughs> she's a shitty person. <laughs> oh, my God. I miss high school huge ego Jaren so much. <laughs> Did you have a huge ego in high school? I had a fucking huge ego in high school. You didn't know me that well, very crucial. Yeah, I you guess. didn't. Yeah. If you didn't see how big of an ego I had, but oh man, it it it's one of those things where again, I was so wary going into this because I thought, okay, this is just another bang dream story. But Chahaya being just awful <laughs> really made me go from I'm probably just going to watch one episode to I'll keep watching until she gets neutered and it becomes a typical bang dream story because I do feel like she won't be awful forever just because the Mm -hmm. way she sets it up, she's meeting all these different characters. And from what it's, from what I know of what my go eventually becomes, it's going to be pieces of that first broken band you see in the beginning of the band, Jahia, and I think one other girl. So just seeing how they navigate those relationships, especially one where you have girls admitting that being in a band isn't fun. Uh-huh. It's going to become typical Bang Dream stuff eventually, but until then, until Chia Chahaya gets neutered, I'm there for her being an awful person. This is all in one episode? Yeah, this is all in one episode. Holy shit. That's and a lot. Again, it's this is the next generation of Bang Dream where we don't necessarily see the previous band members. We see them mentioned. We'll see posters mm-hmm. of like Rosalia. We'll have mention of Afterglow. Um, the current student council president is a member of that band. Uh, so, But we don't necessarily see anyone in person. But Matt, mm-hmm. one of the girls, Taki, is working at a record shop, uh, which is the spinoff of the main um, kind of live house that they all performed in in the previous Bang Dream Seasons uh-huh. circle. Uh, and this shop is in Ika Bukuro, which, uh-huh. again, like, made me, tickled me because of my recent connection to that place. But uh-huh. with uh, the girl Taki working there, uh, manager is trying to dote on her, get, trying to get her open up. And Matt, mm-hmm. we hear someone call for a manager because she's having some unfortunate stuff happen. Uh-huh. And she and the manager is like, okay, come in Kasumi-chan. And Matt uh-huh. popped so loud when I heard Kasumi's voice. Uh-huh. Don't see her at all. But I feel like when you're trying to establish the next generation of Bang Dream bands, mm-hmm. you can't rely so much on the previous ones, even though they're still like performing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but just having that quick vocal... Um, San- uh, like vocal appearance of Kasumi like really tied it all together 
Uh, but yeah, really into the first episode just because it's kind of it's it's familiar, but it's still different enough. But knowing following this mixed media franchise for so long, it's going to go back to what mm-hmm. Bang Dream usually is. So for the most part, it passes the first episode test, but I I have my doubts that I'll probably continue past three or four. Mm-hmm. But until then, we'll see you guys. We'll see. And I think that that's my anime offering for the week. Rakush, have you watched anything else this week? I mean, I have, but nothing really worth discussing. Like, I watched the uh, Tiny Senpai. That was mm-hmm. all right. Um, a little bit of some more slop that I'd rather not name on here. But uh, yeah, no- nothing else, like, worth, like, you know, having a in-depth conversation about. I okay. think, like... I think, like, the ones that I mentioned are, like, really cool. I think there's two that aren't out yet, so I'm kind of just waiting for the first episodes right. to drop for um, Zom 100 or Zombie 100 is the name mm-hmm. of one of them, and then Dark Gathering is the other one. That yeah. Wait, Zombie of... 100's coming out? Uh, yeah, yeah, Zom 100, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or it's Zom actually Haku, I guess. tomorrow for us. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, huh. So I'm, I'm really excited for that one because of the art style and just kind of, like, the concept seems interesting. Mm-hmm. Dark Gathering, the just kind of want to try it out, if nothing else, because I've seen like the manga itself pop up on the Jump app as a recommendation every now and then. So I, I just kind of want to see what it's all about. But nothing else beyond that. Mm-hmm. I, think it's, I think it's a good rotation this season. So How about you, Matt? Anything else? Not that you've watched, but maybe that have yet to debut that you're keeping an eye out on? Oh, yeah. I'm going to definitely go in on uh, Zombie 100. Like just conceptually, it is a. You don't want to call it Zomhyaku? Zombiaku. <laughs> Zomhyaku. Oh, oh, Zomhyaku. Zom hundred. Uh, no, 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 no. But like, I, I like am gonna that. go in on. I am gonna go in on that because like I do like the manga and like Rikush said, the art style for it is looks like it's pretty well done. Um, I'm also keeping up with just horror me a piece, just because sure. like it is just a follow up on an anime I did like before, and I think that's really all that I'm gonna be. Keeping up with this uh, this season? Okay. Is there no quirky high school ensemble this season? Or? It's Hori Mia. But, <laughs> um, oh, yeah. I, I guess it is. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was hoping the Glasses anime would have been. A glasses anime is pure just like romance fluff. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. There's, there's, so far, I haven't seen any like quirky ensemble piece this Damn. year. But that's the only thing I'm missing right now. <laughs> that's the only thing I'm missing. But... Who knows what will be discovered in the next few weeks of the Mistake Zone. But guys, beefy episode. I feel like we're, we're pretty full after that summer tasting. Mm-hmm. I think we established, you know, what we're feeling, what we're not, but much more anime to come this summer. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, guys, that has been the Mistake Zone once again for this week. My name is Jaren. I want to thank some of my best friends again for joining me this week. Matt. Yo, I was here. I want to thank Rikush. Moisturize. See, that's not even that bad if you You're just You're the one that. who brought it up. I'm just saying, You're moisturize is up. fine. I want to thank uh, Consumerism. I want to thank that manager for giving me that discount. Nice. I want to thank Gummies. Mm-hmm. And I don't. I want to thank uh, Immortal Goddesses' Heads in Cages. I want to thank Lost in Paradise. I want to thank... Uh, Kasumi's vocal appearance. I want to thank <laughs> Coffee Boss. Matt, do you <laughs> think we'll get a Coffee Boss appearance in a uh, vending machine? Uh, you know what? I almost feel like I, I want one, but I also feel like I wouldn't want one without Tommy Lee Jones there. <laughs> okay. Wait, that's his name, right? What if, what if it's like a knockoff version of oh, that? You know what? That would actually be better. It's like, it's like, Bones. It's like Coffee Captain. <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> Knock off Tommy Lee Jones. Johnny Lee Gomes. Yeah. Man. Oh, Jaren. Jaren, I want to thank you for hosting the episode. Oh, yeah. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, pals. I want to thank Pekka yeah. And I want to thank my stomach for not throwing up yet. But oh, who, yeah. who knows, boys? Night's still young. <laughs> Night's still young. But Matt, mm-hmm. take it away. This has been the Mistake Zone, and we're all out of moist boys.